Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Dorado here again with another lesson for you guys. Um, this one is on graphing in slope intercept form. Okay, so we've uh, been talking a few uh, few days ago now about graphing using a table of values and also by calculating slope or by x and y intercept. Okay, so we've been doing that the past few days, but today's objective is to determine the slope and y-intercept of a line by looking at the equation and to graph the line using the slope-intercept form. All right, so let's go ahead and get started right off the bat here. Um, something that we've already seen before. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at these. So we have the equation, or rather the function here, uh, 1 half x minus 3. Okay, and just like before, we know that we should always start with a value of 0 for my x value. Now, remember, we talked about before about depending on what that denominator is, we should uh, go up or down by that same rate. So right here, we have a 2 for our denominator. So I'm actually going to go down by 2 and up by 2. Oops just to make sure that I always get whole numbers here, okay? So this should be a 4 right there. All right, so the way we do this is, remember, we always just substitute in each of these values into our x in order to find our output values or our y values. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So we got y equals 1 half times first value here is negative 4 minus 3. So we have 1 half times negative 4, that's actually a negative 2, minus 3 is a negative 5. Okay, now you're going to continue doing this uh, for the rest of those values. If you do happen to see me throughout the day today or any other day, uh, and you want me to show you how to actually substitute in this equation into your graphing calculator so it does all the work for you, uh, I'll be more than happy to help you out with that. But for those of you guys who don't have a graphing calculator and are just using the regular uh, scientific calculators, this is how you would do it. So I'll do one more with you guys so you can understand what, I, what I'm talking about. But you have to do this for every single y, I'm sorry, for every single x value. So the next number I'm going to substitute is this one, which is negative 2. So y equals 1 half times negative 2 minus so, 1 half times negative 2 is a negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is a negative 4. All right, good. So, let's keep going. 1 half times 0 now is 0. Minus 3 is a negative 3. 2 times 1 half is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And then finally, 1 half times 4 is a 2. Minus 3, which is negative 1. All right. So we have all of our coordinates now. We have all of our points. So let's go ahead and write, draw those on the coordinate plane here. So we got negative 4, negative 5. So right down there. Next one we have negative 2, negative 4. Right here. 0, negative 3. 2, negative 2. Oops, sorry about that. One more over. 2, negative 2. And for negative 1. So as best as you can, take a straight edge and draw a line right through those. Okay. So we have our graph. So that's, that's all we needed in this case. We just needed an equation and a table of values. We assigned a few x values that we could look for and found some output values to complete our coordinates. Okay. So now we're going to actually talk about a different form. And I think this one you guys will find that is a lot easier. Okay. So let's go ahead and graph the slope here. Okay. Now let's find our slope first of all. Our slope here is what? Okay. So it is this number right here. Okay. Let me go ahead and highlight it for you. I can find my highlighter. Here we go. And my y intercept or is right here. And I'll show you how that's true. 
okay? Let's take a look at the function that we were given before, okay? Isn't it the exact same function, y equals 1 half x minus 3, okay? So what do you notice about this point right here? Okay, 0, negative 3, or rather, this point right here, which is the same one, it's just on the graph now. Okay, well, that's our y-intercept, right? Remember about y-intercept, we said that in order to have a y-intercept, our x must equal 0. Well, look at that. At this point right here, we're not moving left or right at all, it's right on the y-axis. And because it's on the y-axis, that's the y-intercept, and so... Right here we have our y-intercept of 0, negative 3. Now, why is that important? Well, look. Isn't this number the same one as that? Okay. So in a little bit, we're going to actually talk about how that's true, or is that really the case? Okay. So that 0, negative 3 is our y-intercept. And now... Let's actually calculate the slope given this graph that we have here on the left. So let's see. From this point right here to that point, let's calculate how much we move. Remember, slope is the rise over the run. So if I rise 1, okay, I rose 1, and I move to the right 2, that means that my slope here is 1 over all right, so again, doesn't that number now look very similar to another number that is on the equation, okay? Now, we know that those two equations are exactly the same, so if we wanted to, again, all we really need is the y-intercept, which is one of our points, and we just need to go to a different point. We can use our slope here. We said we rise 1 and to the right 2, which is actually true because we see the same thing on the other graph. Okay. So again, I'm not even going to draw the rest of these points. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a straight line through those. And you'll notice that, again, both lines are exactly the same. So let's go ahead and talk about why that's true or what conclusions we have made from that okay so that equation on the right hand side was in the form y equals mx plus b okay it was in the form y equals mx plus b and we said here that well let's, let's scroll back up here for a second our m so down here our m is the value or the coefficient that's right in front of the x. Well, what value is right in front of the x here? It's a 1 half, okay? And this 1 half is the same as this 1 half, which is our m yet again, and we know that m stands for slope. All right, and finally, it says that we also have a b in our slope-intercept form, and like we saw earlier, this y-intercept, that negative 3, is exactly the same as that b value. Okay, So our b is actually what we call our y-intercept. All right. So let's take a look at our quick reminder here. That says slope equals the rise or fall over the run. And just one thing to always remember is that the run is always to the right. Always remember that, guys. We always run to the right. Notice that our value that's in the denominator of all of our slopes is always a positive. The top one might be a negative because it might be a fall, but we always run to the right. All right, so keeping everything like that in mind, let's keep, especially this one right here, keep this one in mind. 
Okay, let's go ahead and find our slope and y-intercept of the following three functions. So let's see. Right away, I see that I have let me highlight a few things here. My m here is negative nine. That's the value that's in front of the x. So I know my slope has to be negative 9. Now I have a plus 4 at the end, which is my d value, which is also my y intercept. Whoops. It's my y intercept. And remember, it's an intercept, so we have to write it as a point. So this is 0, comma, 4. All right, let's keep going. So this next one here, we know there is no coefficient, or it doesn't look like there's a coefficient there, but we know we can always put a 1 there. So in this case, my slope here is a 1, and my b is a 12. Therefore, my slope here is slope 1, and my y-intercept is an ordered pair, which is 0, comma 12. Remember. For a y-intercept, your x value has to always be 0. All right, and let's finish off with this next one. We have an m of 6 and a b of negative 2 thirds. And so our slope here is 6 and our y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 2 thirds. All right. Let's keep going so for numbers four through seven what we're trying to do is identify the slope and the y-intercept then use those to go ahead and graph so kind of like what we did up in the very top example so let's identify our slope first so my slope is seven my y-intercept is negative four so slope two-thirds, y is zero comma negative four. So let's start at zero comma negative four. So that's right down here. And we know, remember guys, that our slope is our, let me write that, it's our rise over our run. Okay, so we're rising two, which means we go up two, so one, two, and we go to the right three because it's a positive 3. So we end up right there. Okay? And we actually only need those two points, but if we wanted to, we can draw a few more. So let's keep going. Rise 2, run 3. Same thing. Rise 2, run 3. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a straight edge and draw a line right through those. So we have our graph. Okay. Why don't you guys go ahead and try number... Actually, let's go ahead and do this one together. I'm going to have you guys try 6 and 7. So let's identify our slope here. Our slope is negative 2 fifths. Our y-intercept is a 7. So... Slope is negative two fifths. Y intercept is zero comma seven. All right. So let's start with the y intercept. Always start with the y intercept first. Okay. And why don't I actually make a note of that? So always start by graphing your y-intercept. So if it helps, guys, make that little note for yourselves. Always start by graphing your y-intercept first. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go to 0, comma 7, which is right up there. All right, and then let's take a look at our slope. Well, our slope is negative 2, 5, so it's actually a fall this time over my run. So I'm going to fall two. So let's pick a different color here. So I'm going to fall one, two, and go to the right five. 
one, two, three, four, five. That is my new point. Okay, I can do it again. Fall to one, two, three, four, five to the right. Now, we may go over this a little more into detail later on, but I want you guys to know that you can also do the exact opposite. Remember how we said that if we had something like, oh, I don't know, let's say that we had negative 3 over negative 8, that is the same thing as 3 over 8. And notice between these two numbers and these two numbers, they're exact opposites. So when we draw... So instead of going down 2 and to the right 5, we can actually do the exact opposite if we need to. We can go up 2 and to the left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice how if I put my point here, when you take your straight edge and draw a line between the first three points we had drawn, that it will all will also go through that fourth point. So let's let's check it out. You guys see that? So I went through my original three points that I had, but because it has the same slope, because negative three, negative eight, and three eight are the same, then I can do the exact opposite. Meaning that right here the slope of, and let me actually erase this for a second. What is our original slope? If we do the exact opposite of it, we would have a positive 2 on top and a negative 5 down here, which means a rise of 2 and a left run of 5, which is exactly what we, what we just did, what we just drew. Now, that might come later on in the... In this chapter so don't worry about if not understanding you right now just know that you can always draw more points going in the opposite direction all right let's go ahead and have you guys try number six and number seven so go ahead and pause the video right now guys and go ahead and try those two out all right guys let's go ahead and take a look at both of these problems. All right. Let's start with identifying first our slope and our y-intercept. So our slope is 4, our y-intercept is negative 6. So I have here a slope of 4, and I have a y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 6. Now, you might be saying, well, Mr. Grotto, we know that slope is rise over run, but that 4 is not a fraction. Well, remember, we can always make a fraction out of any number, okay? We can always just put it over 1, all right? So what does that tell you? That means that if we start at our y-intercept, which I'm going to go ahead and draw now, 0, negative 6, I'm going to rise 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and run positive 1. Same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, run positive 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, run positive 1. Okay? All right, so that's it. Let's go ahead and draw a straight line through those. Hopefully. There we go. That's actually not too bad. I thought it was going to be worse. So we have a straight line right through those points now. All right, so that wasn't too bad. So just remember, the biggest thing there is if you don't have a fraction as a slope, remember, you can always turn any whole number into a fraction by putting it over 1. That will help you identify your run. All right, number 7, identify a few things first. Slope and y-intercept. So we have a slope of negative 3, and again, because it's a whole number, I'm just going to put it over 1, so I know my rise, or rather, in this case, it's a fall over a run, okay? And then my y-intercept is 0, 6, okay? So, 
my fall says I'm going to fall down 3. So actually, first I have to draw my y-intercept. So 0, 6. I'm going to fall 3. So 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to run 1 to the right. Remember, we always run to the right. Unless we're trying to graph on the other side, which would, we would do the exact opposite. Okay? But we always keep graphing more, po graphing more points to the right if possible. So go from there one more time. Down 3. Right 1. Down 3. Right 1. And again, you could keep going, guys. But as long as you have enough of those points to draw a straight line, you should be good. Okay. So that was my best attempt at a straight line. It actually didn't come out too bad, but always remember, guys, and I, I'm going to keep pointing this out. Notice that I keep drawing arrows. Get in the habit of doing that, guys. You always have to make sure you draw arrows. This pattern, okay, this pattern of going down by three and to the right one keeps going forever as you're going down, but it also keeps going forever as you're going up. Now, what I did want to mention is that uh, for number 6 and 7, notice again, my slope for 6 is a 4, which means that it actually rises up, okay? So it's a positive 4, so as it, going, as it goes from left to right, it rises up, okay? Now, it rises to the right. Now, for number 7, we have a negative slope of negative 3, so if we go from left to right, it actually falls down. It falls to the right. Okay, so just keep that in mind, guys, if you want to remember your slopes. Okay, now let's go ahead and continue with a few more problems. Now, remember that to solve for y, uh, we can always actually uh, just make sure that we isolate the y, and we know how to do that. We've used order of operations to do that before. Okay, so if I want to solve for y, let's go ahead and get that y all by itself. So what I like to do, and you don't have to do this, but what I like to show you, where is my y? My y is right there. So I want to get it all by itself on the left side. So what else is in the way? Well, that 4x is in the way, and that negative 2 is in the way. But remember, SADMAP tells us, so oops, SADMAP tells us that, we always have to get rid of subtraction first, and then division and multiplication. So I can get rid of this 4x first, because I'm adding it. And then I can get rid of this multiplication of negative 2 by dividing it. So let's go ahead and see what we get. So I get here a negative 2y equals negative 4x plus 8. And remember that 8 was positive, so I have to do plus 8. Then here, last thing, I'm going to get rid of that multiplication between those two, so I divide by negative 2. Now, when you divide by negative 2, make sure you do it to every single term on the other side of the equation. So I'm going to cross those two out. What do I get? I get y equals to negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a positive 2. And don't forget your x. And then finally, a positive 8 divided by negative 2 is a negative 4. Now, Hopefully you can start to see how that's going to come in handy because we just went from something that was in standard form and wrote it in slope-intercept form. Remember, what we just put slope y-intercept. Now this is going to become so much easier to grasp. All right, so let's continue on with these next few problems, so 9 and 10. All right, so what are we being asked to do here? It says graph the following lines by using slope and y-intercept, okay? So, in order to do that, well, what did I just say in the top problem? We went from something that was in standard form, which means we went some, with something that had the x and the y both on one side, and we found something that was now in, whoops, in slope-intercept form. Okay, we went to something that is in slope-intercept form. Meaning that that's probably what we should do here if we want to identify both our slope and y-intercept. So let's do the same thing here again. I want that y by itself. So it's 
antara dua sudah berubah. So, you can run one, we can run one. First. Let's try that. We get if y equals next to x. Always have your variable to be very fast. It's how it's going to be if you are. So, you end up with a positive 16, and this is a positive 16. Now, I want to do it by itself, so I can multiply by it. Okay, I want to divide by it. Which is dividing by c. And always remember that you have to divide everything by that c. I get y equals negative 1, I'm sorry, negative 2 divided by 8 is negative 1 fourth. x and 16 divided by 8 is just 8. 2. Look at that. Now I have all the information that I need. Oh, yeah, that was probably too dark. Uh, let's do it. I have a negative one fourth for my slope and a positive two for my y intercept. So my slope is negative one over four. So my fall of one and run to the right of four. And I have my y intercept, which is zero, comma, two. So zero, comma, two is right there. Always start with your y intercept. And then from there, I'm going to fall once and go to the right for one, two, three, four. Same thing, fall once and to the right four, three, four right there. Or like I said, like I showed you guys earlier, if you want to do that trick, you can draw more points over here on the left side by doing the exact opposite. So let's go up one, whoops. Let's go up one and to the right, I'm sorry, to the left four now. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a straight line right through those. That was not nearly as close of a straight line as I wanted, so let's try it again. Nope, one more time, third time's the charm. A little better, still bad, but it's a little better. Okay, so we have our straight line. Okay, now, if again, if you're, that doesn't convince you just yet that you can actually go backwards, let's try it again. I actually have my graph now, and going from this point right here, let's go up one and to the left four and see if we still land on our graph. One, two, three, four. And look at that, we are directly on that graph. Hence why it's important to draw this in a straight line. All right, so we have number nine done. What I want you guys to do is try number 10 on your own. So remember what to do. Isolate the y. Get the y all by itself. If you can do that, you'll end up with something in slope-intercept form. If you have slope-intercept form, it's very easy to identify both your slope and your y-intercept. So why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video right now and try those out on your own. All right, guys, let's go ahead and see if we can figure this out. So again, the whole goal is to find those slope and y-intercept, which is why I highlighted it, by rewriting this in slope-intercept form. So once again, I want my y all by itself. In order to do that, I have to get rid of that 3x first. So let's add 3x to both sides. So these go away. I get, and I'm going to just scoot it over here to the left. So it's 9y equals a 3x. Always put your variables first plus an 18 because that 18 was a positive. From here, I divide by 9 because I only want the y all by itself. Those go away. What do I get? I get y equals 3 divided by 9 is 1 third, plus 18 divided by 9 is a 2. Okay, so... I think we have everything we need here. We can now identify what our slope and y-intercept are. We have our slope and our y-intercept. So let's write those down. Let's see, we have a slope of one third. So rise one and run three. And then we have a 0, 2 for our y-intercept. 
Hopefully you guys can see that. I can see that pretty decent here in my laptop, but I can see how maybe that'll be too reflective on yours. Okay, so let's go ahead and <clears throat> write that down. So let's draw our y-intercept, which is 0, 2, right there. Now my rise is a positive one, so I'm going to go up 1 and to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. Again, you honestly only need maybe like two, three points to graph this entire line. But if it helps you guys draw a better line, go ahead and count out a few more. So up one and right, <coughs> excuse me, and right three. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a straight line right through those. Let me get a different color marker here. Okay, so that was fairly close. It wasn't too bad. All right, so again, if it doesn't convince you yet that you can go backwards, try it again. Instead of going up and to the right three, then go down and to the left three, two, three. Right there. It looks like we are still on that line. Okay, so it's, my graph wasn't all perfectly straight, so that's probably why it wasn't exactly right. But you can see that it actually does work to do the exact opposite if we want to graph more points on the left side. All right, I think we are good with 9 through 10. The last ones that I want to do is number 11 and 12. So this is, an, again, a little bit of review of what we did in the past section when we talked about graphing using x and y intercepts. Now, just to recall, remember for x intercepts, our y have to be 0. For our y intercepts, our x's have to be 0. So if you want, right off the bat, you can go ahead and actually write those in. If we know that x intercepts have y equals 0, then just go ahead and write it in right away. Same thing here. If y intercepts have x equals 0, then go ahead and write it in. Okay, so let's calculate it out. If my x-intercept has a y equals 0, then I can substitute in 0 for y. So let's go ahead and do that. I get 5x plus 10 times 0 equals 20. That gives me 5x equals 20. If I add 5, then I get x equals 4. All right. So I have my x-intercept, 4, comma, 0. And I can now factor this over right back here. Because I'm going to actually plot those two points in order to graph my line. Now for the x-intercept, I'm going to substitute in 0 for x. So 0 plus y equals 20. This is just 10y equals 20. If I divide both of them by 10, I get y equals 2. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in here. My y-intercept equals 2, so 0, comma 2 there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and graph both of those points. So 4, comma 0 is right there. That's my first intercept. That's actually my x-intercept. It helps go ahead and write down the uh, x and y axis, label them. And then I also have 0, comma 2, which is right up here. Okay. Finally, just take a straight edge and try to draw... A straight line right through those and actually to help me oh actually never mind I'm just gonna go ahead and draw those. okay so for, for this case like I said we only needed the y x and y intercept to graph we only needed those two points so we went ahead and drew a straight line and we can already tell that what can you already tell from the slope of this line guys what do you think is it positive negative zero or undefined maybe okay Hopefully you can tell that right now, as we're going from left to right, we are actually going down to the right. We're falling to the right, meaning this has a negative slope. And we can actually calculate what it is, but for now, we weren't really being asked to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it up to you to figure that out. Just know that all you really have to do is go from here to here which actually we already did. So negative two and four, reduce, get negative one half. 
that's if you were being asked to find the slope, you weren't asked to in this case. But just to make those connections here, guys, we were correct. It is a negative slope. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video for this last video. I'm sorry, for this last problem, and we'll see how well you guys. All right, so just remember a few things here, guys. Y equals zero for my x-intercept. X equals zero for my y-intercept. Well, let's calculate a few values here. So I'm going to take 4x minus 3. Now I want to calculate my x-intercept, so I'm going to substitute in 0 for y. 3 times 0 is just 0, so 4x equals 12, so my x is just 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in, 3 comma 0, 3 comma 0. Again, if it's not clear why I'm putting 3 and then a 0, it's because my y is already 0. That's how I defined that particular x-intercept. So I, just, I can just go ahead and straight to writing that in. Same thing here. If I know that my x is going to be 0 for a y-intercept, go ahead and write it in right away. That way, all you have to do now is just find the y and substitute that in. Okay, so this next one, I'm going to do the same thing, but now x is going to equal 0. Okay, 4 times 0 is just 0, so negative 3y equals 12. If I divide both of those by negative 3, so 12 divided by negative 3 is going to equal a negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is my second value or rather my second point, my second coordinates. And now I can go ahead and draw our graph. So 3 comma 0 and 0 comma negative 4. All right, great. So now just go ahead and take the straight edge and draw your line straight through there. Okay, awesome. Well, good job today, guys. I think um, we went over everything you really need in order to start identifying slope-intercept form and actually getting to that point if you don't already have slope-intercept form. Um, but basically, we'll, basically, what we're doing is just showing you multiple ways of graphing a particular linear function given different sets of data. Now, you might be given two points where you might go ahead and say, well, I'll go ahead and just calculate the slope using my slope equation. If you have a point and, I'm sorry, if you have a slope in, a slope and a y-intercept, you'll go straight for slope-intercept form. If you are given something in standard form, so something like our problem number 11 here, you can go ahead and do two things. You can actually uh, isolate the y to turn it into a slope-intercept form, or what you could do is what we did for number 11. We can actually go ahead and just calculate our x and y intercepts and graph from there. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. If you guys have any questions, make sure you guys get a hold of me. If uh, you guys are still a little unsure about the topics we went over today, go ahead and rewatch some of the video if needed. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for today, so I will talk to you guys later. Bye.